Welcome back to the homestead everyone. So excited we finally got most of our parts and pieces for our rainwater collection system. It's been a long time coming. We've been saving up money for it. Finally it's here. We're going to put it together today for you. We're going to show you how we run it to the house with this one and a quarter inch poly tubing. And then I'm going to start to connect our new pump. Let's get the project started. So a few of the things that we're going to do in a part two or a future video is trench for our water lines down to connect to our well and serve that irrigation for this part of the property and then also connect it down to the house. And that's simply because we have to rent a trencher and then we have to get through this. This is our old brush pile, but this is right where our line needs to go. It's gonna be pretty simple uh, what we're doing today. And we are just going to be connecting our two tanks together down at the bottom. We are gonna be running some poly tube underground over here to our pump and then running a partially completed supply line out in the direction that we need it. And I don't have that trencher, so today I'll be using the trenching shovel from the tanks to the water pump. We'll be doing the initial connections on the water pump today, but I can't run it because we're still in a drought and our tanks are completely dry. But let me show you what I think is a good way to configure the connections between two different tanks. So the best way for us to do this is to face the tanks toward each other in terms of where their bulkheads are coming out at the bottom. Each of these tanks, these Norwesco 2500 gallon tanks, have a two inch bulkhead at the bottom and then they have a one and a half inch bulkhead at the top for overflow. So we need to take out the two inch plug right here and we need this reducer. So we need a two inch threaded reducer to a one and a half inch. And then we need a one and a half inch male threaded to a female slip. Now what we're gonna do is create a U in the middle. What that's gonna do for us is when the ground freezes out here in these tanks start to move, it's not gonna really crack our pipe. It's got some play in it so that we are not repairing PVC pipe all the time. And I am gonna cover this up with soil. So as we come out of each tank with these reducers, we are gonna turn it 90 degrees to go toward our pump and to make that U. And in the middle of that, we're gonna put a ball valve. For those ball valves, we're gonna add this uh, sprinkler access cover here so with that we can get to them at any time that we need to. So we're gonna start to connect things here. The best thing to use is pipe thread sealant. Don't use Teflon tape for this. I always make sure to try and get that pipe dope into all the threads. Just get it nice and snug with your adjustable wrench and you should be good to go. We're gonna thread in our one and a half inch. Now we're just gonna cut our PVC to the lengths that we need it to make that U. As you can see, our tanks don't perfectly align here, but that's no big deal. So we're making progress, and as you can see, our sprinkler cover doesn't have any openings for our pipes on the side. It's really hard to find one that has everything that you will need for your project, so we're going to have to uh, cut out some holes here to accommodate our pipes. We're coming over to create our U with this T. Now what this is is a one and a half to one and a half to one and a half T. I've got a one and a quarter inch threaded female right here to a one and a half inch male slip. That'll go in the end of our T and then we can screw in our one and a quarter inch pipe which will connect to our poly. So on the end of our one and a half inch pipe we have our barbed poly connector and that's one and a quarter inch poly barbed to one and a quarter inch threaded and that you need an adapter, a female threaded to a female slip to go on the end of your PVC pipe. Okay, so we've got our modified box with our valves in it and this U shape will allow some movement in here and the box shouldn't impede it too much. I might make these a little bit wider, I'm not sure yet. They tee off and go to a one quarter or one and a quarter inch and oh, hey, check it out. I put another valve so I could shut the system off at this point as well. It's always good to have a lot of shutoffs just in case you need to do maintenance on certain parts of the system. Then over here, we've transitioned to one of those 
polypipe barbed uh, connectors here and we are going to be connecting the polypipes. So the best way to cut this polypipe is with one of these ratcheting cutters. They work really well. I'm just gonna measure it off pretty close or kind of close and then cut it through with this. So you're gonna need some stainless steel hose clamps to be able to clamp this down around that barb. Even though that barb will hold pretty well you need this hose clamp to keep pressure on. Okay, that's good. Now, it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge to get it onto the end of this barb, and you don't wanna stress your PVC too much. And this was sitting out in the sun, but unfortunately, <laughs> it's gotten a little uh, shady over here. So a good thing to have is a blowtorch. Don't melt this, but heat it up well enough where you can slide it onto the end of the barb. So now we're at the top of the tanks and we need to create our overflow lines. You can just do a short one and have it spill out the side if you like, but I want to route them around the outside of the tank. So I have a one and a half inch uh, threaded male to a one and a half inch slip female. I'm going to put that in this one and I have another one for the other side. And then we are going to run some one and a half inch pipe here and tee it off and then divert it past the other tank over there. So I'm not going to use pipe dope up here and I might not even cement these in place because it really doesn't matter if there's a leak up here. If these tanks are so full that they're coming out the overflow, a little leak on the pipe is no big deal. But wherever and however you end that overflow piping, wherever you put it, you do need a screened cap on the end. So they make these threaded caps for the end and they make these end pieces and what you want to do is screw a piece of uh, screen on the end so you do not get mosquitoes up into your tanks. This is a really important piece that you cannot skip for these tanks because mosquitoes get in your tanks, start breeding, start laying eggs, your water is contaminated and you have a big problem. So I just took it straight off this tank over to here, teed it off and came straight out. And then in the future, we'll go down the side like that. So when you're setting your pump, you want to do one of two things. You want to set it and then bring your water to it or bring your water up and then move the pump to where the best position is for where your water is. And that's what we are going to do. We're going to plumb everything first and then bring our pump to it, and then we're gonna set it with concrete anchors. Now the reason I put it here is because it's right next to the barn, and it's easy access to uh, the electricity, and it's on this nice concrete pad, and it'll be a little bit more protected from the elements. Additionally, after it's done, I'm going to build a little insulated uh, housing for this. You can buy them, but they're expensive and they're not well insulated really at all, or if they even are insulated. So I'm gonna build, build an insulated box for it. And in the future, I'm going to add a pressure tank here also, so this pump isn't running constantly. So for this Grunfos JP20, I believe it is, I'll link it in the description below. You've got a one inch inlet and a one inch outlet, and you will need a one inch male threaded to a one and a quarter inch female slip. And that's so you can bring a good amount of volume in. I'm gonna fit the first supply line here first from the tank, and then I'm gonna set it and anchor it into the concrete. So it was easier for me to put this whole assembly together before I put it in the end of the poly line. And that's gonna help me to gauge where I need to cut that poly line a little bit easier. I just got off the phone with my buddy Pete B at Pete B's Homestead. He suggested I do something on the top here and I'm gonna show that to you, but I don't have the part. And I also ran out of quarter inch pipe. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Back from the store, it's a different day. We bought more quarter inch pipe, we bought a quarter inch T and we bought a quarter inch threaded end cap. Now Pete made a great suggestion. If there is any instance where you need to prime your pump, this is the way to do it. So it's going straight into the inlet and you can pour water straight down into it to prime it because obviously you don't want to start it dry. 
Now that we have everything dry fit on the inlet side, we're gonna work on the outlet side. Ooh. Water line has been sitting in the sun, the poly line. It is extremely hot. It's still a little unruly, but it's much easier to work with. Now that we're all roughed in and dried in, I'm going to mark for our concrete anchors for the pump. Now each pump's going to be a little bit different, so you're going to have to pay attention to your model. I find it easier on rough concrete to take a punch of some sort and punch out where your bit is going to sit. That way it doesn't walk on you. So now that you have your pump secured to the concrete, you can then cement in all of your dry fit PVC uh, inlet and outlet parts. Next thing you need to do is you need to wire the press pressure switch. And we've done that already. We're going to wire it for 240 volt, which means you don't need to use uh, three wire. You can use two wire. So in this case, we've got both hots. The red and the black are the hot. The white is the neutral, and I've just capped that off. And then I have also put on our ground to the grounding screw right here. If you're wiring 115 volt, it's the same exact configuration. However, this pump can do 130 or, or 115 or 230. If you're doing 230, 240 like I am, you need to come in here and switch this switch right here. You need to pull out this plug and it says 115 on it or 230. So there's this little plug, it says 230 on one side and 115 on the other. It was set at 115, but I'm going to flip it around the other way to 230 and put it back in. Don't skip that step or your pump is going to have issues. Cover everything back up, glue everything up, and you are ready to go. Next thing I have to do, of course, is fill in the trenches and cover everything up over here, all of the pipes coming out of the tanks to prevent freezing this winter. And here's our supply outline. And of course, I have to rent a trencher to get this line in the ground, connect everything to the well house as a bypass from the well for irrigation and the barn, and then run it down to the house. But that's a lot of work for another day. Well, that's it for this project, friends. I know you were waiting for that one for a while, and we finally got it done for you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them for me in the comment section below. Don't forget to check back soon because as soon as it rains and those tanks fill up, I will run it for you and show you how everything runs and how we are diverting it down to the house. As always, have a beautiful blessed day and we will see you on the next video.